Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Search Start Coding. Uh, in our previous videos, we have created uh, different methods for PayPal and Stripe API. Now in this video tutorial, we are going to see how we can integrate those in our Blazor server web page. So we already created these two uh, methods, make payment Stripe and make payment pay PayPal. And for that, we have already included those two methods in our uh, user control as well. So check out Stripe and check out PayPal. Now on this uh, front end, we have just one option here for cash on delivery. We will have to add two more options for PayPal as well as for Stripe. So let's create the required models for that. So in our custom models, in data models, in custom models, we'll be creating one class. Let click add new class. We will be naming this as payment mode model and this will be having three options in it let's make it public and it will only have name so let's copy this and paste it here and let's change it to string name so this is payment mode model and this payment mode model we are going to use on our page which is my cart so here instead of all this we're going to declare here the payment mode model so I have it here payment mode model and the default value will be cash on delivery so let me change it to cash on delivery this one as well now we'll have to create a list of string to hold all the three options cash on delivery stripe as well as paypal so here i have created three as a list list of string and named it as rd which is a radio button options and cash on delivery paypal and stripe are the three options available so we have declared one model and one list of string now to hold all this uh, paypal details and stripe payments uh, stripe payment details we will need few uh, options so let me create the required fields so here i have created four things stripe card stripe month year cvc because in our user controller if you see for stripe we need four details card number expiry month expiry year as well as the cvc and the amount or in case of paypal we only need the amount which we, which we need to check out so in this we have declared four fields now we will have to change the html structure to hold the to display the three options So here we have the payment mode as just a payment mode which is currently cash on delivery. So here we will have to add the radio buttons option. So I'll remove this payment mode and simply put the edit form and that will be model payment model. And uh, we are binding the value to payment model dot name. And here we have a loop of RD options. If you see here we have simply defined three options cash on delivery, PayPal and Stripe. So that will be displayed as a radio button list here inside this div. Now to we will add some style to this uh, radio button. So for that let's put a style over here. So here I have added this input type for input type equal to radio, some border width and some height. It looks fine. Let me run the let me build the project first. So build succeed. Let me run it. So 
Okay, so let me log in first. Now add to cart. Okay, so here you can see we have three options cash on delivery, Stripe, PayPal, and cash on delivery. So for PayPal, the amount will be same. For Stripe, we will have to create a form to accept the Stripe details like the card all the credit card details and all so let me create that form here here just below the stripe option let's stop the debugging so here this is a table row just below this table row we will insert a new row and in that we will create that structure to accept the credit card details so here if you see it's a simple table row with two TDs. In the second table data, we have created this if structure. And if the payment model dot name is Stripe, in that case, we have this table with a card number. Then we have an input text and we have binded the card number, which the variable which we have declared here. Then we have the expiry month, expiry year, and the Stripe CVV. This is like a number, this is email what type email or text we can take okay and uh, this looks fine now let me run it again Okay, so if I click on PayPal or if I click on Stripe, okay, in case of Stripe, if you see all the that entire structure is available. If I click on PayPal, then it is again gone because I have added a if loop there, if if condition over there. Now in this, if you see, we will have to in when we click on checkout, then if it is PayPal, then we will have to uh, change the payment mode to PayPal and assign all the details if it is stripe then we have to fill all these details as well along with our form so let's add the coding part now so here in this method checkout click uh, we will be removing this payment mode and we will be adding three sections uh, actually two sections for stripe and paypal So here this payment mode will we will, uh, will be using only for cash on delivery. So here if and another if the payment model dot name is is this is for Stripe, this is for PayPal. And if it is stripe, then it will be assigned here okay so this looks fine now to uh, assign all the details we will have to include few fields in this my cart object so this my cart is nothing but if we go to the top we see it's a list of cart models so inside this cart model or uh, in our custom models we will have to include few more fields for that for stripe and paypal so let's add that so here we have added this fields which is pay paypal payment stripe card number stripe month year cvc stripe value and the order reference so these all fields we are going to use in my card or tracer page so let's first add for paypal so if the payment model is paypal in that case the final total will be assigned to paypal payment and the payment mode will be payment model dot name and for stripe for stripe uh, we are assigning the card number month year cvc final total and then model name and this entire object my cart is getting uh, is getting passed to this checkout process so let's go to this checkout in our user controller if you see we have created these two separate methods just for our testing purpose 
now these two methods or these two apis make payment stripe and pick payment paypal these two we are going to use in our checkout method so here we have the checkout so this checkout we are going to change let me put it just below these two methods okay so here this this entire checkout process is going to change because all the details like uh, paypal total or the credit card details everything is inside this object because if you go on this cart model we have included everything as a part of this okay so let's change this method so here if you see i'll just comment it out this one so i have declared a response model and i've got the record the first record because the first record contains all the uh, details and here i have the payment mode is if it is cash on delivery then simply go for checkout nothing to do if it is payment mode is paypal then get uh, we'll have to do the checkout as per this so here we have added await so let me add it here let's change task okay so here if you see for paypal we are calling this method and we are simply passing the paypal payment so whatever response we are getting from that response we are splitting it out because we are getting a url and from that we are again splitting it based on the equal to sign and simply getting whatever we are getting we are assigning the it as order reference this order reference we are going to store in our database as a reference against that uh, mode of payment if it is cash on delivery then nothing to be stored it will be a simple order id but if it is a paypal or a stripe then for that particular order id this is the reference number of paypal or if for that particular paypal id this is the reference number of a stripe payment transaction so this is for uh, paypal and for stripe uh, we are splitting it based on equal sign and simply calling this so these two methods which we created separately checkout paypal and checkout stripe this is like uh, api calls so these two api calls now we are calling it inside this single method based on the option selected by the user on the front end okay now this order reference whatever we are storing this order reference we can go to the checkout process and in this customer order we are storing all the details like uh, payment mode shipping address everything so against we can in this customer order in our database we can include one column and simply update our schema and then we can store that as well so let me run this and see let me do check out login Add to cart. Mm. Oh, this cash on delivery we are not interested. Let me go to PayPal now. And let me put a breakpoint in our user controller. And let's see. So this is the PayPal method. I'm just waiting for the response to come back. And let me check out. okay so this entire it has come here it has called this pay, make payment paypal and i've got the response so if i see the response i've got some url and from that url i'm simply splitting it out based on the reference number and here if you see the order reference if you see the reference number is uh, split i'm splitting it based on the equal to sign so that i get the token this token is nothing but the transaction number i'm simply clicking on continue and if i see go here this order has been placed successfully okay now simply i go back and place another order this time using stripe I'm adding the details let me add the expiry month as well year as 26 cvc as one to three and let me put a breakpoint here and 
und Checkout. So here if you see I have got the response and in this response it is success. Okay. So uh, I can split based on the reference here I think it will break. Okay. Because if we in this make payment stripe we will have to add one instead of success we will have to send the response. And here, along with success, we'll have to add the transaction number as well, business transaction ID. And return the response. So this looks fine now. So what happens like if it is successful, then we are simply adding the balance transaction ID. And then where that balance transaction ID will be uh, if it is success, if data contains success, then it will be split based on equal to sign, which we have added here as a equal to sign, and we'll get the transaction ID, and that transaction ID will pass it to our order reference. And from the cart, we at the end of checkout process here, we can simply get the first record as a detail, and that we can assign to our customer order and add it in our database. So this looks fine now. So this was it in our today's tutorial. If you have any doubt in the entire shopping cart process or you need any help, you can simply drop a comment or contact us on our Facebook page. See you in the next video.